Wait till you guys see this awesome bug right here. Look at that. This is, let's see if it'll do it. Are you gonna do it? Oh, yep, <laughs> there it goes. This is the click beetle. Now, if you think that this is a truly wacky looking organism, you are not alone. I remember seeing these all the time as a kid and having no idea what they were. And then of course, I would go and pick them up and they would make their distinctive, let's see if he can click. Oh no, oh he's gonna walk, perfect. And when I would pick them up, they would usually make their distinctive clicking defensive posturing. Now he was doing that initially when I first captured him, but now, oh, whoa. He used it to fly. We don't want him to do that quite yet. Now, when I first picked this guy up, oh, there he goes, there he goes. There's the click. This is where they get one of their common names from, the click beetle. This distinctive clicking noise is created when the beetle bends its thorax forward, hooking a small spine into a slot in its abdomen and creating tension. When that tension is released, the thorax rockets back into place, launching the beetle and hopefully warding off potential predators. Now there are over 9,000 species of click beetle worldwide and over 900 species in North America alone. But as far as I know, this is the only species we have in North Carolina. Now this is also the biggest one I've seen and from what I can tell online, this is about as big as they get. But as beetles, these insects do undergo complete metamorphosis. So they will start their lives as eggs, then they will go through three larval stages, and finally, they will emerge as these fully grown adults. Now, I have actually found the larvae of these beetles under logs while looking for snakes without even knowing it. They look like giant mealworms, but they're actually called wireworms. And in that stage of their life, what they're basically doing is burrowing in those logs, hiding from predators, and using their sense of smell and vibration to find smaller insects that they will then consume. And they'll continue living that way until they finally emerge from their logs as adult click beetles. Now you probably know this already, but the reason that these eye spots are in the back of the head capsule there is actually to deter predators. If you are a predator that doesn't see color or a predator with poor vision, those eye spots might confuse you into thinking that this beetle is actually something else entirely, maybe something you don't want to eat like a snake. But other than those distinctive eye spots, you can also identify these because of their size. These are pretty big beetles. In fact, some of the largest that we have natively in North Carolina. And also that thoracic cavity on top of those wing casings, it looks kind of like a, a white paint splatter on a black background, which is pretty distinctive to this species as well. Now, as adults, these are no longer carnivores. It's only the wireworm stage that is carnivorous. These eat primarily decaying plate matter, and so you will often find these under the bark of rotten logs or inside the rotten logs. So these are non-venomous, not poisonous organisms. They cannot do anything to you. They might click at you if you touch them, but that is all you have to fear from this beetle. So if you do see them in the wild, there's no reason to fear them. There's no reason to squash them. And as large beetles, these are, of course, ecologically important. There are so many secondary consumers that like to eat beetles. Everything from birds to reptiles to amphibians to mammals would snack on a click beetle if it could find and capture one. And of course, if it wasn't deterred by the eye spots or the clicking noise. This has been a really fun animal to see and film in the wild. This is one of the species that I remember seeing all the time when I was little. And it's really cool to see it now that I'm a little older and can really appreciate the amazing organism that it is. And we'll grab just a couple macro shots of it and we'll put it right back on his tree. All right, ready to go back? Here's your tree. Bye. Thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe to the Wild Report YouTube for new educational wildlife content coming on Thursday mornings as often as possible. I'll see you on the next adventure, but until then, stay safe and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of the Wild Report, signing out.